I stayed up at the bar a few times, but I didn't want the barman thinking that I needed someone to talk to. I sat in a corner near a window, but the barman kept coming over, casually walking past, looking for empty glasses, and asking me if I was all right for a drink or what I thought of Brazil getting hammered by the Germans or of Garth Brooks not coming to Croke Park. I tried to picture myself from where he'd been looking at me. I can't have looked that bad, that lonely, or sad or neglected. It never occurred to me that he might be gay. I was fifty-four. I was too old to be gay back. There was another place, the Blue Lagoon, a bit further away at the other end of the street. I hadn't gone in, but I didn't like the look of it from the outside. It was always too busy, full of families and couples and groups of men who looked like they talked serious rugby. I can hear her, my wife. Grow up, Victor. So I stayed put and decided that Donnelly's was my local. I'd never really had one before. There were three or four pubs within walking distance of the old house, the house I'd just left, but I'd never honed in on one. I'd been in each of them only a few times over the years, and I don't think I'd ever been on my own. Rachel had always been with me. I went to this new place every night, or every evening. I had to force myself to do it at first, like going to the gym or to mass. I'd go home, home, cook something, eat it, then walk down the straight line to the pub, for one slow pint. I'd bring a book or my iPad with me. Donnelly's. It was a good old-fashioned name for a pub. I was living near the sea again, and I'd gone past the pubs I'd known when I was a kid. The schooner, the pebble beach, the trawler, they were all a drive away from the apartment, or a long walk that I didn't want, or too close to where I'd grown up. That would have been sad, a man of my age going back to some wrinkled version of his childhood, looking for the girls he'd fancied forty years before, finding them. Donnelly's would be my local. I trained myself to feel that it was mine. I listened out to hear the names of the staff. My barman, the lad who was on most evenings when I wandered in was called Carl, or Carlo by those men and women who seemed to know him quite well. I kept it at Carl. How's himself? Not too bad, Carl. Same book. It's a big one. I'm nearly done. Any good? It's okay. What's it about? Stalin. There was a fucker. God, yeah. Worse than Hitler, they say. A monster. Who'll win tonight? Costa Rica. Do you think? I've my fiver on them. What are the odds? Six to one. Not bad for a two-horse race. That's what I thought. We'd be cheering for them, so. Going into the bookies was new, too, or just pretending to go in. I hadn't put anything on Costa Rica. I knew nothing about horses or greyhounds, but I'd stick the occasional fiver on the football. The winner, sometimes the score. There was a paddy power right beside the pub. It became even just walking past and having a look at the World Cup odds in the window, part of the rhythm of my day, another corner of my new home. I'd moved in in the summer, so it was all done in daylight, waking up, getting out, coming home, climbing the stairs, opening a window, cooking the dinner, strolling down to Donnelly's. A pub in daylight is a different place. It's less of a pub. It's a good time to start, a good time to move in. I could sit back for a while and watch the room become a pub. I'd nod at men I'd seen before. The heat, unbelievable. The apartment, the block from the outside, reminded me of my old primary school. The car park at the front even looked like a deserted schoolyard. The wood of the main door was a bit rotten where the paint had gone. The door glass had chicken wire running through it. The stairs up to the first floor were wide enough for gangs of charging boys. And there was something about the light that came through the high window at the stairwell in the morning. It seemed exactly like the school stairs more than forty years ago. It wasn't an unpleasant sensation. My old primary school was only a couple of miles away. The secondary school was even nearer. The apartment was okay. I'd decided that almost immediately, even when it was empty and bare and the letting agent, a nice young one in her early twenties, had let me in to see it. It was going to do. Fresh paint, I said. Yes, she said. Was there blood on the walls? 
She looked at me to make sure I was joking. I wasn't sure I was, but she smiled. It just needed, like, sprucing up. Fine. I wondered if the last tenant had died in here, in the kitchen section of the one big room, or in the bedroom I'd glanced into, or the bathroom. But I didn't ask her. I knew it would sound creepy, and I didn't really care. I'll take it, I said. Oh, cool. Am I your first client? Fourth. Does your dad run the business? No. Sorry, I said. I'm being stupid. It's okay. There were two windows. I looked out one of them and saw the car park, the low railing, trees, and the red brick houses across the street. I pointed down. Cats, I said. There were two of them, three of them, sitting under a reno that looked like it hadn't been moved in a long time. They're all over the place, she said. She stood behind me. But they don't do anything like... Grand.